I want to get into the video interviewing because this this is this is pretty fun. And uh, I get a ton of questions about this one, and more and more companies are using this now. And they're using it, um, honestly, because it's it's convenient. And, and they got executives flying all over the world. Sometimes you're in different cities or states than they are. It's a lot easier for them. They can pile a bunch of people into a room. So I know it's, it's a little uh, less comfortable than actually being able to engage with somebody. So I, I thought it was about time. I get so many questions about this. I figured let's do it. So this past weekend, what I typically do on Fridays or Sundays, whenever I have time, depending on what my schedule looks like, is I think about the week that I'm about to go into. And, and actually, I, I get excited, <laughs> excited to do that stuff. I mean, I love Mondays. I don't know if you saw my I love Mondays video, uh, my little vignette the other day. Uh, but I thought about video interviewing and I wanted, I, you know, I didn't want to just tell you, you know, do this, talking to the camera, here's put the lights on and so on. I, li- I literally thought about what do I do every Thursday with you? I go through a checklist like this. Uh, I, I literally do this every week. So every week you have a video interview with me. I need to be prepared and, and these are the kind of things you're going to need to be able to do. So so let's go through them. I have 20 of them. Most of them will apply to virtually everybody, but, uh, but, but if you do these 20 things, I guarantee you're going to come off looking pretty, pretty good, uh, pretty good. So the first, the first one, and I broke these up into five, I broke these up into five categories. The first one is the prep. And I'm talking about the interview prep. You need to do all the same stuff. I want you to do everything I've already told you. In the previous 17 live office hours, in the previous 100 recorded videos, in the 400 posts and all the things that I've shot out into the world that I've taught you, do those. All the same principles apply to video interviews. It, it, it's no different. The, the, you know, just understand that the video interview is about just having a different medium. It's not about you behaving differently. So, so that's, that's the first thing. So, so step number one, to give us a little warm up and a running start, do, do all the things that I've instructed. You know, it's the same, the same, the same techniques. Now let's get into, to the setup. So the actual, the setup and the environment that you're going to go into, one of the things you need to be really careful about is your webcam, your webcam. So I'm using a Logitech 1080, you know, 1080 922 or something. Gives us a pretty good pretty good picture, but you certainly can use your your laptop or your your phone or there's a number of different things that you can use. It's all okay. It, you don't need to worry about, you know, how clear you are as far as, you know, the level of granularity. Your 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 webcam on your on your computer or your MacBook or your Dell or whatever will be just fine. The most important thing about the camera is do you notice that when I when we have our live office hour sessions, I'm I'm even with the camera, more or less, more or less. The big the big mistake that people make is you know they look down at the camera. How many how many times out there are you on you know a, a web chat with somebody or a webinar or something of that nature and they're looking down and they're they're talking down to you? Um, they're not probably not really talking down to you, but it 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 gives off that impression. So I, I don't I don't want you to run the risk of that. And I, you know you don't want to be looking up either. So you want to try to get get it on, on the right uh, plane with your eyes so that you're looking at them level when you're and we're gonna get to how to you know talk to the camera here in, in a few minutes, but but just kind of you know get it eye level and there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with stacking uh, your 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 laptop on on some books. I have a little um, before I have a, a wide monitor. I have a 27, basically just so you know my setup. I have a 27 inch monitor. Some of you've probably seen it when I shoot videos facing facing the sunroom. You probably see it in the background. Um, but but you know when I had a just a 13 inch uh, uh, little MacBook Pro or something that I and mine mine is behind there. But I would just put it on a little stand or a little stand. And, and it raised it and it, and it was it worked great so that's this is this is important you gotta you gotta get that that uh, that webcam in the right spot the next thing is your lighting so you can have lamps or you can have sun either way is either way is okay and it obviously depends on what time of day 
you're doing this. Um, but the important thing about the lighting is that the lighting needs to be behind the camera facing you. So I don't know if you, you know, when we, when we do this every week, uh, my setup is there are lights on the other side of me and depending on the time of day, because I am in an office that has a lot of lights, sometimes it, it wreaks a little havoc and I have a little difficulty with the lighting, which varies. But in your environment, wherever you are, as long as you're facing a window and the camera is in front of the window, that'll work. Uh, some of the videos that you guys have probably seen from me running around the last couple days, I stand right there and I just I look at the camera uh, that's right in front of me and I don't even have lights in front of me, I just have the sun. Or you could be sitting by, you know, near a window. That all works. The important thing is you want the light behind the camera. Um, if I didn't have lights behind that camera and I was shooting like this out of my webcam, it would it would be it would be blistering white because of all that light behind me. So you just want to be careful that the sun is in front of you or the windows in front of you or your lamps or lights are in front of you and you don't need big powerful expensive lights. Most most bright lights will will work. You can put a lamp in front of you if if you want. So that that'll work. So I just want to make sure that you are you're mindful of that. Then we want to talk about behind you. So behind me, there's not a lot of commotion. You see some books over there. Uh, you know, this is this is part of my desk here. There's it's a built-in area. So there's not a lot for you to see. There's there's really not a lot uh, to distract you. Uh, the the room in the in the back, you can't really see a lot of the furniture. Actually, I'm still waiting, <laughs> waiting for furniture for that room. But uh, but you just you want it clean. So you don't you don't want a lot of stuff behind them behind you that is going to draw their attention away from you. So you don't want pictures with prints posters, all that other kind of stuff that could be distracting. And you want to be careful if you have a window behind you, if there's anything going on behind you as well. So you just want to be careful of that. So that's that's number number four. Number five, the audio. Now I have a microphone here. It's an Audio Technica. It's a, it's a fairly powerful microphone. You don't need anything like that. Um, I cert unless you have one, uh, but there's a lot of uh, inexpensive microphones that you can use. You can also use your your computer microphone as well. Sometimes you see people they've got the earbuds in. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I don't mind it for a casual webinar, but for an interview, I would prefer that there's nothing around you. And I also don't want things falling out of your ears, things of that nature. So so I would just I would just either use your computer microphone. Or 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 get a or get an inexpensive one. Here's another one that a lot of people forget about: the internet. Obviously, you're going to need the internet and a good download speed. Uh, my guess is you're doing this in your home or maybe your office, depending. But the thing that you want to make sure is that you are Etherneted into the internet. Don't rely on Wi-Fi. So every time I set this up for you. I actually turn off my Wi-Fi so I'm wired in so I can give myself the best the best signal strength. It's 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 really important that you uh, that you do that. I want to make you know I want to make sure that you've got the most the best speed that you can because nothing is worse. Uh, you know how when you're on a cell phone and the, the sound keeps breaking up. Um, it's the same kind of thing in, in the, you know, the screen will, will start to freeze. I do coaching calls. Uh, whenever uh, I do coaching calls with somebody who is in my one-on-one -on -one coaching and they're out of town, they don't live in my area, we do like Google Hangouts or, or Skype or whatever they like and, and, it, and it becomes problematic sometimes if, if, they don't, uh, if they have a lot of apps running and we're going to talk about that in a second. But, but just make sure that you are wired in, your internet speed is, is good and one of the other things that can help is shutting all the apps on your computer. You would be amazed at my time machine backup that auto backs up that you forget is on Dropbox, other things that are running in the background. So I turn all that off when we do this. The other thing that I do is I actually, um, I'm watching to make sure that, that all of this is working properly and where I see you in the chat and I watch, I'm watching to make sure that my signal strength is, is, um, is solid. I'm using a, a Google Chrome browser and I, I, I have an empty browser basically. I don't have a lot of widgets or extensions or other things on it that are running that will interfere. All of these little things contribute to stuff that can go wrong, right? No, nothing breaks my heart more than when, I, when the internet 
craps out or my computer craps out on you guys. So, so just be careful. You want to make sure that you shut your apps and unplug the telly. Unplug the telly. I know it sounds it sounds silly, but you know the the, the telly starts ringing or your your phone's buzzing or whatever, and it can become it can become extremely distracting. Let's roll on number nine. Make sure you're sitting in a comfortable chair. I don't know if you know this. I don't sit in a chair. I'm actually on a Swiss ball. Right now, it's my favorite purple Swiss ball. It's been with me for a long time. I haven't sat on a desk chair since 14 years now, uh, 15 years, something like that. But just something comfortable so you're not, you're not moving around, you're not slouching, but it'll keep you pretty consistent with... Um, you know, with the camera and, and so that there's not a lot of variance and, and, you know, there's not a lot of distractions between you, the chair, the table and all that good stuff. Then let's talk about the table here whoop, for a second. Um, you know, one of the things that can be very, you know, distracting is your, your table or your desk. You want to make sure that it is clutter free except for the things that you need um, you know that we're going to talk about here in a second, but but just make sure that your desk is spotless except for your notes, and don't do not forget your resume. Do not forget your resume. I want to say that twice because it's easy to do. You, you assume that they have it, and when they when somebody says to you, "Hey, can you walk me through your resume?" and you don't have it, or "Hey, I was noticing on your resume and you don't have it." Uh, it's it's it, it's it's a little embarrassing and it'll make it a lot more difficult and in a lot of cases you're gonna start to panic so have your notes have your questions have your resume cover letter anything you sent them and anything on them anything on them the other thing you can do if you've got little bios or whatever you could tape them up or whatever put them on the wall uh, so that it, you know you're not noticing I don't use aside from these note cards I don't use notes for these I I, I know what I want to tell you but uh, but I know that you know it's a lot for you to handle what you need to say to them what you want to ask them and then remembering their backgrounds if you've done your research and the things about the company so you know you can have some notes there if, if it doesn't get too distracting for you but you want your desk to be very clean you don't want to be shuffling around for stuff that you cannot find and then you know, you know, I play with the chickens before we we uh, we start this, and my dogs have to go in the crate. So we well, actually, they're with my wife in the living room right now. She's home ill today. But um, but your pets, I don't care if they're cats, dogs, fish, whatever. Just make sure they're in the right spot, and just keep it so that they are you know out of the way and will not you know start barking when the UPS guy comes like they've done a few times for me. But anyway. Just lock them up. All right, let's get you camera ready. So you got the setup. You're prepped, you got the setup. You know the environment. Let's get you camera ready. And I wore a black shirt for you today, your dress. Uh, this is kind of an interesting thing. So most of the time, I wear solid colors. And I generally, so man or woman, doesn't matter, solid colors appear better on the camera. What I also have noticed is darker colors generally are better. It doesn't mess with the camera. If you wear whites, it typically washes you out. If you wear stripes, it can be a little noisy. Now, sometimes I wear stripes because I only have so many shirts that I can put on and I'm in front of you a couple times a week every week. But for you, just dress in solids, dress in solids, try not to have too many colors on. If you got a jacket on or something, that's cool too. I would just try to make it as neutral as possible and I would make it darker rather than lighter. So don't, uh, you know, and, and when I do television shows, uh, when I actually go on TV, uh, the producers always tell me, hey, don't wear white. So I never do, so you'll never see me on TV with white ever. So just watch, watch the dress. Now, uh, so ladies, on this one, you ain't gonna need to worry, but makeup. Your makeup is gonna be just fine. But dudes, <laughs> my brothers, I'm telling you, uh, you know, you, I'm not saying you gotta put makeup on. I don't wear makeup, but, but uh, you wanna make sure if you have lights on that you need in the house in order for you to do this, and the lights are right over you, you were gonna be very shiny. So I remember, <laughs> I 
I remember one one time, I don't know, a year or two ago, I was doing something with the McQuaig Institute and I was their recruitment expert on a show and I was doing this in my house and it was about five o'clock and it was dark out and my setup at that time was much different than my setup now and I had lights, just like a light in the middle of the room and my face was all shiny and it was about 10 to five <laughs> I called my wife and I, she wasn't she was on her way home from work. I called her up and I said, "Oh my god, honey, I've got a shiny face. I need some of that rouge or whatever you have, powder." So, I went into her bathroom and sure enough, I dabbed a little on my forehead and nobody can tell. So, you know, if you need if you need to put it on, go ahead, but it'll it'll be it'll be more dis, it'll be more disruptive if you got lights over you. Um, and, and everything will become much more shiny even if you don't have um, very oily skin. So you just, you wanna be careful and you might have to get in touch with your feminine side guys, but do it if it helps. And then another thing about shininess, glasses, uh, it's okay to wear glasses if they are glare proof. If they are not glare proof, uh, you're gonna have a lot of rainbows and a lot of other stuff. So I, I, I'm always careful about, uh, sometimes I'll use my reading glasses, but just you wanna be really careful with your glasses. Now let's talk about practice. Ooh. All right, so next next section, let's talk about how to practice for this. So you're doing all your prep, you got all your notes, you know, you, you've gone through, you've rehearsed your questions, you got all that stuff going on. So the biggest thing for you is to talk to the camera. So it's, you are gonna blow away any interviewer and all the other candidates if you can actually talk to the camera and not talk to the screen. So if I sat here and looked at you and did all this all day, um, that, that wouldn't be nearly as effective for an hour as me looking at you and talking into the camera and explaining that I want you to talk to the camera. So you will be amazed at how quickly you get good at that. Just make sure that when you are responding, you are talking to the camera and as a man, or you are looking at the camera. And as a matter of fact, you also, if you can look at the camera when they're talking, if you can get your setup so that you can catch them in, in your peripheral vision and they're speaking to you and you're looking at them, that's, that's, a, that's your home run. Trust me when I tell you, you will, you will come across much more effective. They will feel much more connected to you than the other candidates if you can maintain that eye contact through the camera. This is a big deal. It would probably be the single tip I would give you to say this is what will score you the most points. So practice that and then, and then what I would do is get a buddy or a spouse or whoever, family member, and actually get them in another room or across town or wherever they are and, and, and practice. Have a little Skype call or a Google Hangouts or whatever, um, but you wanna, you wanna practice with your computer and your computer lens. You know, FaceTiming and all that other stuff is cool, but this will be much more effective. So, so you want to make sure that you're practicing with a buddy or a spouse. I would definitely, definitely do that. Now, let's get into the actual execution. So, I mentioned this one. When you do this, so I want you to practice the eye contact and I want you to make sure that you maintain the eye contact through the session through the session. Big, big deal. Big, big deal. Then I want to make sure you're wearing your best smile a lot. It's okay to be serious. I'm serious with you sometimes, but you got, you got to make this as fun as possible and you need a real smile and it, it needs to come off as though you're enjoying this. Um, you know, I love this and I want you to love the opportunity to interview with that company through the camera. I know it's not the same as being there, but smiling a lot, trust me, I mean, this, is, this, is, this is a huge, huge deal, huge deal. So make sure you're smiling. And then number 20, don't end without getting their email address. It's easy to forget. It's easy to forget. You got them, get it, have them spit it out to you, and then make sure you jot it down, and then within 24 hours, like I taught you, make sure you send that email to them, copy the HR person or the recruiter or whoever, and, and just, but don't forget it. You're obviously not gonna get their business card, 
but if they escape and you don't get that email address, now you have to contact the recruiter, you have to get it that way, or you have to take guess, which is worse. So just wanna make sure that you are doing that. So, 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 so keep in mind, there's a, there's, a, there's a practicing to this, there's a setup to it, right? You wanna make sure you got the right kind of environment, you wanna get camera ready, you wanna practice, and then you wanna execute it effectively. So those are my tips. That's what I go through every week. And uh, so, you know, that's where this stuff comes from. So I hope you, I hope you liked that.